Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Kathy J Show. I'm your host, Kathy J. I hope you are having a very good Monday morning. I hope you had a good weekend. Hopefully you had a good weekend, got some sleep, and you weren't too stressed out by those games. <laughs> But you know what? I love the fact that you hang out with us this half hour. Thank you very much. Make sure you can stay connected with us anytime at KathyJShow.com. So, you know, like I was saying, it was a beautiful weekend and and beautiful skies, beautiful weather. And we have such a beautiful state that we live in. We are truly blessed here in Colorado because, let's admit it, there's so much outdoor adventures to explore here in Colorado. Did you know that this year, the Colorado Parks and Wildlife, they are celebrating their 125th anniversary, yay! (laughs) It's a major milestone. They've had a lot of successes and a lot of new challenges and opportunities that are coming ahead for Colorado Parks and Wildlife. To tell us their story, we have Rebecca Farrell here, yay! Branding and Communications Manager for the Colorado Parks and Wildlife. Thank you so much for being here. Sure, thanks for having me, Kathy. Okay, so many cool stories, everybody. So let's talk with just Colorado Parks and Wildlife. They are an enterprise agency. What are they? Yes, so Colorado Parks and Wildlife is unique to some of the Colorado other agencies you might think of in our state government. Um, We're an enterprise agency, which means that we are largely funded by the money that we bring in through the sale of our parks passes, our hunting and fishing licenses, and registration of vehicles like OHVs and boats and snowmobiles. Okay, so this is my question. I know that because my family, they're avid hunters, avid boater, you know, fishermen and stuff, so we always licenses every year, you know, Mm -hmm. piling up in shoeboxes. So is there really enough money coming in from that? that you can support 900,000 acres and 43 (laughs) parks and stuff. I mean, it's nice that you get your money from all that, but they... It can't be enough, right? Um, it's obviously do what it's, you do. it's a huge, huge undertaking. Yes. The work that Colorado Parks and Wildlife does all across the state. But and everybody, so, that's why it's so important for you to <laughs> get your licenses and stuff because every dollar is needed, right? Absolutely. And we're very fortunate, and we'll talk a little bit more about that too, that we have great partners throughout the state, including the Colorado Lottery. Yes. Um, but, you know, we are fortunate. A lot of states are seeing a decline in some of our hunting and fishing sales. That's not the case here in Colorado. No uh, way, it's because such we all beautiful destination, and there, it, there's so many animals that people just don't mes- necessarily have in their home states, and so they flock to us, and so they are continuing to to purchase those passes and those. Yes, no, it, God bless. I, I'm so happy. But let's talk about how how many that 900,000 acres that the Colorado Wildlife uh, that you guys support. So we have 43 state parks in there we do. coming yeah. up on 43 yeah we're coming up on 43 <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second everybody we also have wildlife areas like you have to deal with everything from um conservation and then making sure that everything's going to be good to go for the future right yes so colorado parks my life has a huge and awesome mission that we're yeah. tasked with and so there's kind of three key pillars to that one is the propagation of our wildlife species here in colorado and there's over 960 wildlife species that that we help manage here in the state Um, The second is to manage a quality state park system. And so we want to make sure that as we bring parks online, um, we're also still doing the due diligence and putting in the work to maintain the parks that we already have. Yeah, right. Third and probably most important is to really educate and inspire. Um, And so both our current generations, our future generations to really actively become stewards of our natural resources here in the state. Absolutely. And everybody, when we come back, we're going to talk with Rebecca about their connection with the Colorado Lottery and why that's so important, but also the future like she's saying, making sure that everybody that lives in Colorado has a chance to get out and enjoy it. We will be right back. The Colorado Lottery is an official partner of the Kathy J Show. Colorado Lottery, play on. And welcome back to the Kathy J Show, everybody. Yay! Thank you so much for joining us today. You know, over the last 36 years, the Colorado Lottery has contributed more than $3.7 billion, yeah. with a B, everybody, to our beautiful state. That's awesome. The money goes to fund our park and, and trails, the conservation programs, and to protect our wildlife as well. Rebecca's been telling us about the relationship. Well, now you're going to tell us about the relationship between the Colorado Lottery and Colorado Parks and Wildlife. Let's go for it. We are one of the only states, everybody, that puts our money back into the state from the Colorado Lottery, or from our lottery system. Right, and so when the Colorado Lottery was approved by the legislature, it was written into statute that that money had to go back into education and to the outdoors in Colorado. Awesome. So every time you buy a lottery ticket, whether or not you're a hunter, an angler, a hiker, or a biker, 
you're still putting money into the conservation of all of the wonderful things that we do have here to enjoy in the state, as well as helping with education for our kids. Exactly, and you don't have to gamble at all. You're going to still benefit from all of this, from everybody that gets their scratch on all the time. So why is the partnership with uh, GoCo Go so important to you? And that's Get Outdoors Colorado. Great Outdoors Colorado. Great Outdoors Colorado. So Great Outdoors Colorado is the funding arm of the Colorado Lottery. Yes. And so when they are looking at those sort of four quadrants that they provide funding for, um, we are very lucky that we qualify in three of those buckets. And yeah. so um, they do put money into education directly into the, the Department of Education here in the state. Um, but they also provide money directly to Colorado Parks and Wildlife for wildlife conservation. Yeah. Um, they put money into parks and trails, and that could be anything from your local open spaces to helping fund and acquire new state parks, like we'll talk about here in a bit. Yes, we will. Um, as well as lots of money for, for trails in other park programs. And so we are very fortunate to have the conservation funding the trails funding as well as direct wildlife funding from our partners at GoCo. Oh no, it's amazing everybody and I just want to say again, Colorado Lottery is the only one in the world whose majority of the proceeds goes right back into the conservation of their state. That is incredible and it's awesome. We did it as, as voters so that's really cool. Now let's talk about these state parks. Yeah. So we keep saying 42-43 because we have 42 but we're working on 43. We are. Fisher's Peak is 42. Fisher's Peak State yes. Park okay. is 42. And back in October, um, there was an announcement from Governor Polis that the Sweetwater Lake property up in the northwest part of the state um, is going to be working to come online as the first uh, partnership with the U.S. Forest Service, whereby they will own the property, but Colorado Parks and Wildlife will manage that property as a state park. Oh my goodness. Now, is that just because that had to do with you still want to be able to help conserve it? but it was already owned kind of thing. Is that what it is? Yes, so go You have so many different relationships <laughs> with all the different properties in the we, state of Colorado. We work with so many amazing partners and it, it keeps us able to help, you know, really keep that heartbeat of Colorado going. Absolutely, because yeah. there's so many different things depending on where you live in the state of Colorado. Absolutely. One of the really cool things that I thought was cool is, uh, is Jennifer was telling me that she got her job because she happened to be hiking up at Staunton, Staunton Park, which we, one of our first lives was up at Staunton Park. It rained on us. We didn't know before <laughs> Before we go we didn't think ahead to the weather, oh, the weather. <laughs> but you were up there hiking and you were unemployed and you saw one of these could tell everybody what you saw sure so Staunton State Park has this amazing track chair program so when folks um, have different abilities aren't able to necessarily get out and hike the same way that you or I might well Maybe yeah, right. <laughs> um, they have the opportunity to still go out and experience the trails and get out in these amazing track chairs. And so they essentially have sort of almost tank-like uh, wheels on them. How cool um, is that? And that's something that yeah. the Colorado Parks and Wildlife um, bought, decided so we, they needed. There's a lot of uh, friends groups that help fund those, but we certainly help by staffing a, a program to, to get people to come in and volunteer and to sign up for that program. And it was such an amazing and unique looking thing yes. that, you know, I wanted to know more. And the more I learned, the more I got interested in Colorado Parks and Wildlife and, and here she today. is everybody now is that that sounds like something that sounds like the best way for me to make it to the top of a mountain Do, can I <laughs> <laughs> you probably have to have a reason to get there on are that probably thing. some qualifications <laughs> I was just trying just trying but don't go away everybody because there's lots more to talk about with Rebecca we got an equity grant that we want to talk about um, and something else that the state just passed as well that's really cool for our future we'll be right back Kathy J. Oakwood Homes is an official partner of the Kathy J. Show. Oakwood Homes, building happiness. Kathy J. And welcome back to the Kathy J. Show, everybody. I am Kathy J. And I love that you're hanging out with us for this half hour. Thank you very much. Rebecca Farrell is here. She is the branding and communications manager for Colorado Parks and Wildlife. And Rebecca, for the first time, in over a decade. Ah, this is a big deal, everybody. There's a new piece of legislation that was just passed last year, and it's really changed things for the Colorado Parks and Wildlife. What is it? Yeah, so there were two different legislative bills last year that will really um, make big changes with our agency. And so the first one um, is our Outdoor Equity Grant Program. Yes. And so what that legislation did was allow a uh, different way of the lottery to uh, issue out some of their funding. Okay. Um, so uh, a Colorado Outdoor Equity Grant, it's a third of its kind in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and so what it does is provides an opportunity to, to give money to programs and organizations that are really focused on helping um, folks that maybe have been under-resourced um, or um, underrepresented in the outdoors to yeah. give them an opportunity to participate with all of Colorado. Absolutely. So you, so more or less, are we talking about like um, 
I don't know, like inner city kids, underrepresented communities, those kind of things that sure. don't get out into the into the Absolutely. like they don't have outdoor ed programs in their schools, those kind of things. Correct. Okay. And, and it may be um, you know folks with disabilities, folks yes. in the LGBT. BTQ community that, that really haven't had the opportunity or the resources and the backing behind some of the programs to get people outside that, that may look or, or have a different experience than a lot of the people that you think of when you see some of the photos that, that get put up in, in advertising and things like and, that. And you're absolutely right. And I can't stress enough how being in the outdoors and all those programs, because I grew up here in Colorado, mm -hmm. so I had outdoor ed program, you know, I was in Girl Scouts up at Ponderosa Camp, like all of those definitely made me who I am because there's something about going camping with classmates, friends, being youthful and being up there. It really does change you and give you so much more love for the for your conservation, for the Absolutely. importance of it. And our partners at GoGo have done studies that talk about just the importance to your mental health, your physical health yes. and well-being of being outside. And, and so we want to make sure everybody has that opportunity. Right. And everybody needs to know what it's like when a squirrel poops on your sleeping bag. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that. <laughs> but the fund is going to grow every year, which is so cool. Absolutely. Um, and this year it got how much? So $750,000 yes. was the first year of funding, which is amazing. So um, everybody keep playing on because the more money, <laughs> the more we play, the more money goes into all these programs. Exactly. And there's still five hundred. $150,000 yet to be allocated. Okay. And so um, at the end of February, early March, um, we'll be opening up our grant cycle. So people from organizations or, um, you know, different programs and projects can put in for these grants. Um, and we are mandated to give that money out by the end of June this year. So oh that gosh, money will be, be hitting the ground and in effect very immediately. So grant solicitation, the process opens early March. You're going to be giving it out by June. So everybody, if you want to get a hold of this money to help you and your kids or whatever you're working on, this is going to be awesome. They just need to go where to sign up for that. Yep. So the details will be on our website, which is cpw state.co.us. It's a mouthful. I know it's a mouthful, <laughs> but just start typing it in, everybody. Right? You'll find Google it. Google will right? get you there. Okay. Um, and, and all of the details on, on the application process and what it's you can expect right will, will be there. So, Rebecca, the Senate bill, um, it passed to create a Keep Colorado Wild par State Park Pass program. Correct. Okay, that has Another to do with mouthful. our driver's licenses, <laughs> right? So, it will actually be your vehicle registration. Okay. So, um, we are working very closely with Division of Motor Vehicles, and so um, folks that register, um, um, a truck, a passenger car, an RV here in the state, um, we'll have the opportunity to acquire a reduced cost pass to all of our 43 state parks. And so by statute, that can be no more than half of our current park pass price, which is $80. Okay. So for the price of $40, all of the photos that you've been showing, all of the different you parks You get instant programs, access to all of it. It's such a huge value, and it's such a different way for us to fund our agency by having that come in through your registration. Yes. It'll give a lot more people a lot of opportunity to participate in the conservation work that we're doing at CPW. When does that start? So it will begin January 2023. Okay, so we got a year. But that's really cool. I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm okay with that. So, and it's going to be when you register your car at the DMV mm -hmm. and they'll just give you the option. You don't have to take the option. You can right. still You can pay. opt out of it for sure. Yes. And pay. we'll still have day passes available or you Good. can buy a full price pass if you so choose. <laughs> right. But you shouldn't have because you should have just got it when you registered the car. But the money from the pass or this is or from this bill this mm -hmm. is what i'm excited about because you it's going to help like search and rescue and all of those programs that we don't think about right so primarily this is is really geared to helping us maintain and acquire new state park properties um, as we saw with covid you know we had a ton of visitation a lot of people wanted to get outside and we want to provide more opportunities for that so cool. maintaining and acquiring new state parks is kind of the the big tenant of this bill but there are actually 10 things within that bill which i encourage you definitely to look on our website and, and look at those but um, one of them is to provide additional funding and resources to our backcountry search and rescue and our search and rescue programs here in the state, which Love are that. hugely important to the to the work that has to be done when people are out, maybe not necessarily in the right conditions or prepared yes. correctly. Again, know before you go, it could rain. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it could get really cold. Yes, you could get lost. Right. It's, exactly. It's, it's a whole or it could get hot and you could dehydrate. You don't want any of it, right? Right. And, you know, um, there's some opportunity to help with additional wildlife conservation. Um, and certainly one of the big things that I'm excited about is additional funding for our educational programs. So yeah. partially, you know, with our Colorado Outdoor Equity Grant Program, but also other interpretive and on-park educational resources to, again, help that younger generation understand the importance of what makes Colorado Colorado and how they can help. 
Absolutely, because then you realize it's right. It's, you don't have to go to the mountains for conservation. Right. It's anywhere. Right in your I, backyard. Right, right in your backyard. Yeah, speaking of our backyard, everybody, when we come back, we're going to tell you what's going to be happening up in our backyard. So the Colorado Parks and Wildlife just acquired a property that's kind of in the backyard of Denver. And um, I know that uh, a lot of people are pretty excited about it. What is it? Fire? What's the word you use? Shoot? Go? What is it you have to do? <laughs> we'll ask again when we come back. All right, we'll find out what they have planned for 2022 and all the highlights. We'll be right back. Kathy J. Ramos Law is an official partner of the Kathy J. Show. He's a medical doctor and a lawyer. Ramos Law, what makes us different makes us better. Kathy J. Welcome back to the Kathy J Show, everybody. So for this half hour, we've been talking about Colorado Parks and Wildlife from conservation to protection, to the money that goes into everything they do, to the fact that we help put the money in there for everything they do. But right now, we want to focus on what's planned for the year ahead. So Rebecca, what can everybody look forward to? Yeah, so we have quite a few um, really exciting projects that are kind of continuing over from, okay. from the last year. Um, there's two different parks. We've talked a little bit about Fisher's Peak as well as the park at Sweetwater Lake. Um, and we're really still in the, the thick of master planning for both of those properties. Now, when you say master planning, what does that mean? So that means everything from thinking with the community about um, access to the park and the roads and, and how we'll manage traffic and um, all of those kinds of things. Um, it means the actual development of the park itself. Um, where will a visitor center sit versus where do we want trails? Um, in Fisher's Peak, we had a really unique opportunity. We had a huge partnership with the city of Trinidad. So um, along with GoCo and yeah. many, many other partners. Um, but it was interesting to be able to kind of understand and, and watch the balance of the needs for recreation and conservation right within the, the group that we were initially starting with. Right? Yes, right. So as we were thinking, you know, everybody's big point was we want to access that peak. It's yeah, we got to get up to the trail. peak. We got to exactly. get to the right. top. Um, but really then we have to think about where the trails go and what kind of wildlife use is on that park and there are nesting raptors that sit on that peak and wow. so really thinking um, conscientiously about the wildlife and how we have to work within the environment that we're in as well as looking at the amenities that people are interested in. That's amazing! Yeah, yeah that's, I, mean, but I watch you guys doing all that. I, I trust you. That's what your your background is in. So who knew there were velociraptors and <laughs> fishers? I'm kidding! I'm kidding everybody! Yeah, but that's cool that there's raptors and all that that we would have no idea. We're just there right. to get our binoculars out and stare at them. And that's the thing is you know we want to make sure that we are doing right for the people who are coming to visit the park. Yeah. You know it, it's going to be a destination for the people of Trinidad and yes. so we want to make sure that the things people from around the state coming up from New Mexico are kind of expecting from amenities perspective yeah but also making sure that the the folks who live in the area kind of have their voices heard and, and their desires met as well so a meeting always has to happen you we have some big that's series awesome of series, of series of meetings <laughs> everybody that's and online input and everything else and, and we'll be doing the same at Sweetwater Lake that's um, awesome. we're working with Garfield County Eagle Valley Land Trust as well as GoCo to really start thinking about that property it's this beautiful pristine property how do we add a amenities without taking away the character of the property and it, so right. we'll be continuing that planning process here throughout this year. That sounds very stressful. I'm glad you guys deal with that and not us. <laughs> but there's also one that's pretty exciting. This is the one I was teasing before the break everybody that I couldn't remember the word you use and I have a hair that's coming out of my mouth. I'm sorry. <laughs> so Rebecca, what, I was like, what is it? Is it? It's shoot, but it's, it's pull. It's pull. Yes, everybody. The Colorado Clay Shooting Range up in Brighton. You've acquired that. Yes. So we just recently acquired the Colorado Clay Shooting Range um, over yeah. Yeah. Brighton. It's very close to Bar Lake State Park as well, so it's a fantastic opportunity to kind of look at both of those properties on a nice day out. I see that for yeah. sure, right. And so we'll be managing that as a recreation area, which is very similar to how we're managing our cameo shooting and education complex over near Grand Junction. Um, but it's a fantastic facility that offers archery. It offers um, a lot of clay shooting, which is the, the pull yeah, and, yeah. and shotgun, um, and gives people just the opportunity to do some sport shooting, to practice their, their targeting for hunting or just really you know, as I'm thinking about the Olympics coming up and you've got things like the biathlon where you're yeah, skiing and amazing. shooting, like there's so much opportunity to participate in shooting sports, even if you're not a hunter. And, right. And that's what that's why I was like, why was that important for you guys to acquire acquire something that was about shooting and stuff? But I understand now it's yeah. I mean, like, why not have a place for people to practice to get good at it? Right. <laughs> right. And in addition to that, you know, there's a there's a federal excise tax um, through the Pittman Robertson Act. And what happens with that is that states are allocated funding on the purchase of uh, firearms and ammunition. Oh. And so even if you are going in sports shooting and again, you're not pur 
purchasing a hunting license, there's still an opportunity for Colorado Parks and Wildlife and the state of Colorado to benefit simply by you sport shooting. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Pull. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to get a single target, I'll tell you that right now, everybody. So to find out more information about Colorado Parks and Wildlife and all of the amazing work that they do, all you got to do is visit their website, cpw.state.co.us, everybody. Um, but before I let you go, I just want to ask one more time, why is it important for all of us to get out and enjoy this beautiful state of ours? Well, first of all, I mean, just looking around, we're so incredibly fortunate that even, you know, sitting in your backyard, you may have a view of, of a mountain, you may have a, a rare bird that yes. comes through. Um, it's important to know what they are and why they're so important to the state of Colorado. And certainly by, again, purchasing a, a state parks pass, coming up available yeah, through right. your vehicle registration, um, going out hunting, fishing, getting a, a boating registration, you're actively putting money back into conservation work and that includes habitat you know, work where yeah, we're helping along it. rivers and making sure right. beavers Rebecca. and everybody can be healthy. Rebecca <laughs> Farrell, everybody from Colorado Parks and Wildlife. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Everybody keep playing that Colorado lottery and help our state.